EBS Broadcast presents. Whoa, are we in an airport right now? I don't think so. We're in the EBS studio. About to get going and kick off an episode of the EBS podcast, Just Go. And Just Go, we're going to be talking to EBS students who have done the Erasmus program. And let's talk about their trials and tribulations and what they went through and how it's made them a better person overall and what they got out of the experience. But more importantly, let's stop talking and let's just go. Okay, this is the first episode of the Erasmus podcast, Just Go, brought to you by EBS, the Estonian Business School, places to learn and to gain the knowledge for life, if anything else. Um, I'm brought to you today in the studio by Eli. Yes, I'm Eli, third year student at EBS. Nice to be here. That's great to have you, man. Yeah, thanks Talking for having me. <laughs> you're straight up gem of the school, and we got uh, we got the big working man for the school, Mr. Randy Padar. How uh, are you doing today? Just keep it, Randy. Uh, thanks, Caleb. Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, I'm third year student, also uh, trying to manage uh, EBS Student Council. So you're the head of Student Council, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you're the person I need to complain to. Yeah, and you gotta get some. If of you have any done. complaints. Not for today. Um, <laughs> but let's get to the actual point of why you both are here. You both share something in common that the viewer obviously is not aware of. You both are Erasmus participants who have done in your last, uh, was it last year's semester, first or second? Sec. Uh, it was actually first. First? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I did a full year, so yeah. I had both semesters a there. A full year away from the Estonian winter. <laughs> my God, he was the lucky one. <laughs> Freaking legend up in here, am I right? He got to say to Italy, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You guys both went to Italy. For yeah. those viewing on the camera, you can see it in the flag. Um, if you can't, there's an it Italian flag on the table. Just so if you forget, it's not Ireland. Um, obviously, I don't shouldn't have to say that, but some people they get confused with colors. Let's be honest. Yep. Um, but let me just open it up. You know, being like, why Erasmus? Like. For Randy, obviously, as an Estonian, he wants to leave the winters. Uh, for you, you are in a foreign country. Why would you? Why would you go Erasmus? Man, I needed that sun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I mean, Erasmus is just something that you have to experience. It's, it's, it's a, uh, it's. I mean, you know, I can't even find the words for it because it was such an amazing time. You know, it's just something that you have to ex experience. And plus, you know, you get to go to another place, meet different people talk with them, get new ideas, new perspectives. So it was just, you know, this big, amazing experience. Yeah, that was the most school-friendly answer you could have <laughs> given, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> for now. Um, well, great. After the show, anytime. Um, for you, Randy, do you feel the same way? Or, you know, maybe, I don't know, is it, what did you get out of it? Like, why? what were the leading factors to going into doing Erasmus? Uh, for me... Yeah, the one thing was just to go abroad uh, to experience something. But uh, but I guess when I study in Estonian business school, I'm really interested in different markets. Uh, furthermore, yeah, I needed sun as well because we do live in Estonia. But but for me, it was even more like a business oriented. I, I tried to look for different markets. Uh, Especially, I was uh, really interested in luxury markets, uh, and uh, that's what I went after. So, uh, if I'm just so I'm getting this clear, when you went, like, for me, I haven't done Erasmus, but if I was going to, I feel I would go more for the social aspect of, of getting out of the country, mm -hmm. feeling different. Like, I wouldn't really give, a, I wouldn't really give too much of thought towards um, looking to a business aspect and where to market it, or like where to go with my future in that aspect. I would really just want to be in the moment. So for you, it was more just the, f the focus on stepping away from school, um, EBS, and learn learning another culture, and then trying to find markets for future growth to go into. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, I mean, eventually, it, it was more like a culture like, like a culture trip for me to, to network and socialize and uh, communicate with different people. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, I got great experiences. Uh, I saw so many different things that I, I wouldn't see anywhere in uh, north of uh, north of Europe. So Yeah, it makes sense. I can imagine. We're pre it's pretty bland up here. It is. There's just white everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I just, is it? I mean, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You can go to the some parts of Estonia. That's pretty bland. Let's be honest. 
But that's enough of talking about this goddamn country. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> what about you, Eli? Was it the same thing? Because uh, pr- for the viewers, obviously, you don't know this, but priorly, we were talking about Eli's life plan of going to Switzerland next, right? Yeah, I'd like to go to Switzerland. And- go to Switzerland and then go back Go back to go go to Africa and yes. then try to develop more there. So were you going to Italy the same mindset? Like, I'm going there as an opportunity for me to observe another country and the markets and f- develop a plan? Or were you going for the more experience base just to develop yourself as an individual? Well, I actually went for both, you know, because during this uh, experience, I just, you know, discovered some new aspects, you know, in yeah. me, myself. So I, I kind of, you know, grew personally and they also, you know, broadened my horizons. I mean, I get I got to meet like these different people, different mindsets. So I just was, you know, there to collect these ideas. And I was, you know, talking to different people, you know, different party nights or, you know, somewhere in restaurants. We're just talking about, you know, our plans, you know, about our futures and I ended up meeting different guys who were just interested in investing in Africa. So I was like, wow. Nice. Yeah, for me, it was an amazing experience. And, you know, I got just, I don't know, man. I can't even find the words. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, then um, on top of that, now I'm just curious, though, like, out of all the countries you could have gone to, right, yep. why'd you both choose Italy? Like, what is the... What are those, like, when you're like, oh, I go to Spain, I go to Italy, they both got sun, right? You're avoiding the depression. But mm-hmm. why specifically Italy? Why Milan? Or, or why your school even at that, if you want to go that detailed? Well, uh, Milan, well, Bocconi was the university where, where, I were, where I was last year. And it's actually one of the, you know, um, prestigious universities uh, in the world and in, in, in Europe, you know, in mm-hmm. general. And it's one of the best. So I was like, man, if I have an opportunity to go from EBS to Bocconi, I might as well take this opportunity and go discover myself, discover, you know, some other things, you know. And when I got there, I realized that, wow, this is it. This is it. So I had this different, um, I don't know, you know, different people that I met, uh, discussions, and I mean, I can't even, (laughs) I can't even, you know, Man, it was just a crazy experience, and I learned a lot. I developed myself as a human being. I just, you know, yeah. I can see that I've gr- grown up from, yeah. from that stage, you know. So, so overall, just, so I'm getting the gist of it. It's just an overall experience for you to develop yourself. And, I mean, of course, we go to business school. We're all about that mind, li- mind mindset and trying yeah. to find that hustle. But from what I'm getting from you, it's mainly just you wanted to go for yourself to develop yourself and like truly experience like, okay, I've had enough of Finland, enough of Estonia. I need something new to refresh those batteries. Yeah. I needed to learn something new yeah. as well, just, you know, to grow myself, yeah. to grow, you know, as a human being. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what about, uh, same for you, Randy, same question, but I would like to pivot it slightly differently because um, when you're talking about opening, you're very, very keen on talking about, like, I was going there with the mindset that it's a new culture, new markets. You were very fixated on that. And when you went to school, um, when you went to school in which university again? I went to Luis. Luis. Yeah. It's very fancy. It's in Rome. Ah, okay. So you were you just in the you like the cradle of civilization. I mean, that's obviously not the actual cradle of civilization, but Rome wasn't built in a day. So, yeah. um, like, were you going there with the mindset that you were trying to develop yourself more, or you really just wanted to find? How do I say this way? You wanted to develop yourself as an individual, or you wanted to develop yourself in a business aspect? You know, see what you really were, what your chops were made out of, to really push yourself that way. Um, I guess Rome itself. It, isn't like the perfect place to to go for a business or to met like that kind of people there but uh you know in addition to, to this market search um i had like a really um like a really strong point why i was choosing italy it's because i i played 14 years 14 straight years i played football and uh, it was always one of my dreams to to be in Italy and to to play in Italy and to live in Italy. Did you so, get to play in the Coliseum? Uh, I played in college league. No, did you get to play in the Rome Coliseum? Uh, Rome Coliseum? No, I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Dude, I'd give you a million bucks if you could do that. <laughs> I I must I must be honest with you. I even didn't went to Coliseum. So, I mean, I understand. I, I mean, I've been there once. It was it was okay but there are too many people like too oh. many tourists yeah that's why i mean when i was there 
I spent actually a few days in Rome and when I was there, I actually had to wake up early in the morning with my friend, Pancho. So we went there and <laughs> we went there. Yeah, my friend from Chile. Yeah. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> shout, shout out to Pancho. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I woke, woke up early, like, I don't know, 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. So we went there and we got like, we, we were the first to get in. Mm. So, so yeah, that that was a problem. I mean, I, I live next to Vatican. Mm. Uh, a lot of people. I mean, Man, waking... you must have got holy every day, right? With Jesus <laughs> all the time. I was blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. You're just like reaching out of the yeah. balcony, like, please press me. Yeah, um, you know, waking up some days at like five or something, and yeah. you, you go for a walk, and you already see people yeah. trying to go to the museum and um, already exploring the city. So, for business aspect, it's not a like ideal city to go to. But uh, I mean, all this history and culture, it yeah. it, it amazes me. Um, here's an odd question I just want to ask you guys because I, growing up, I lived all over the place. And the last big city I lived in was Istanbul. It's like 15 million registered people, 5 million undocumented Syrian refugees, right? Um, going from Tallinn, which even though like we're not a big city by far, there is, I get the feel that in, in even though we're a small city, we make a lot of things happen and it's a very fast pacing move city. Did that, uh, did that fast pace mentality that, that I've at least grown to know and like really enjoy here, did that did you feel that there and or did it like did it help prep you for going to another much bigger city where a lot more is happening if that question makes sense at all well it does i mean in my point of view i mean milan is is a big city it's a huge city a lot of people and uh for me i mean i come from helsinki areas which is a big uh area in finland metropolitan area uh, in finland as well so for me it wasn't any i mean a surprise that i will have this kind of you know things there like many people in a you know metro or subway yeah or many people in the tram no i mean it was of course everyone uh was you know was kind of busy yeah you know just caring about their thing and i totally got that so i wasn't that surprised you know yeah italians are not busy <laughs> they're they're busy like just having some great time always like I mean, yeah. seeing everywhere, <laughs> sitting in the cafeterias and in restaurants. And uh, I mean, in Rome, I guess there are more tourists than, than in Milan. Uh, yeah. I guess that was like the fast pace uh, lifestyle there that y- you could see like so many people every day. And th- there was something I'm not really used to because in Estonia, I live next to the forest and uh, every day I go walk. Uh, I, I go out for a walk uh, in the forest, and uh, when when you every day wake up next to Vatican, you can imagine what kind of masses you see there. Yeah, there's no forest there. So <laughs> <laughs> Good luck yeah, with finding yeah. forest. But I found that I, I actually found a forest, but it was in the north. I went to the Dolomites. To, yeah. yeah, to hike with my friends and uh, Pancho. No Pancho this time. <laughs> it was other friends, but yeah, and no, northern Italy was quite different. It was this, you know, just the same as uh, I don't know some parts of Finland. You know, you could see people there and there, woods and forests and stuff. But then when I went to uh, to Sicily, that was quite different than from Milan. Milan is this big business city, fashion and everything. People are busy to do some, you know, some of their own things and. You go to Sicily, people are just relaxing, and it's just... It's because the mafia takes care of them. <laughs> uh, they ain't, they ain't got a, they I would not say that, them. though. <laughs> that uh, wasn't me. <laughs> let's not confirm or deny any of this. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know about the, the Milan, but in, in Rome, at least, there are, like, uh, huge parks, actually, like, where you can escape to. Uh, and they're completely, like cut off from the from the city so, so wait are they are they are these parks like in the city yeah, or are they in just the city, on the outskirts yeah, in the city basically in the center of the city um yeah. i'm trying to envision this in my head like you say a city park i'm thinking like um central park you know like new york kind of thing is in it the like the middle of the city yeah, yeah they middle, have the same in milan actually but is it like is it fully groomed to where it's like with benches and it's like full paths yeah, and stuff or yeah. is it just like fucking woods no it's just a park you know yeah. grass and everything you can chill there with your friends take a few beers and stuff you know enjoy your evening you yeah. know playing uh football or something you know yeah sounds good um well then i i wanna I'm, I'm happy that we're living this up right now i really am 
because I'm really hoping I get your hopes up high to crush them later. <laughs> okay. It's a bit of a devil. Um, I actually do want to do uh, one more thing though. Like if if you were if you go back right, and you were go back to your respective cities, um, at those cities, would you have you know approached it the same way again? I'm actually going next Friday. Man, you, you to Milan. You. See <laughs> to Milan. <laughs> see what he's on. He's on that. Ne- he's on that next level right now. He's like, I'm going back. I'm beating Poncho. We're starting a business. Stuff is happening. Yeah, I'm going actually next week back. I mean, of course, this time is different because, you know, I know the city. I know how the things you know operate there. So it's just easy to land, take yeah. the bus or take the taxi and get to the city, and you know the places already. So have the have the have the city has the city left a mark on you? Is what I'm saying. I don't know, man. I mean, sort of, yeah. yeah. For me, it definitely it definitely did like leave a mark because, you know, in Rome there's a, there was always, um, I mean, in Estonia right now I have so much work and projects to do, uh, and every time I, I feel like uh, I really want to rest or or take the time off. Uh, I'm I'm thinking about Rome because yeah. there was always like this relaxed mindset. Uh, so I mean, Rome isn't the city I would go to to do the business, but uh, more like a city to to go for a vacation. And yeah, yeah. And could you could you guys see yourself going back there permanently? No, for I me, mean, no, I, I mean, mean, I know you guys both have. Mm. I mean, you have your whole plan to go yeah. to Switzerland, then go yeah. Hong Kong, and then go back to Africa. Um, I don't know what your plan is. Probably it's going to Sawa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but would you would you guys consider going back there if if the opportunity presented itself where you had a stable job and you could you know still continue to travel and stuff? Would you guys take that offer for the retirement? I would go back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If the I mean opportunity presents itself, of course. I mean, if I get a job, you know, in finance sector in Milan, of course, I would go back. I would go back. Definitely, but, but it's not like your first choice, then. It's not like my first choice, but it's always a beautiful place to visit. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's so much memories, and it's like, I mean, for me, it's the best times of time, um, times of my, of my life. So, of course, I would go back. I respect that answer, and so you just you would see well the, the gist I've gotten from comp talking to Eli the last forty minutes out is that he's very very long term focused, and you obviously are long term focused differently, but you. You see Rome instead of a location for a career as a retirement place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So would you would you think that in Esto- retiring in Estonia would not be as relaxing as retiring in Rome? Because to me, I feel like going to Rome, like when I lived in Istanbul, so many people it just it got on my nerves. I got used to it, but it was always on my nerves. And here now, living after three years, it, uh, two years, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to like, oh, it's a big sea. I got to go back and listen to that noise and stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would go back for like uh, for. Uh, the Italian cuisine, actually, uh, and um, you know, people are not rushing everywhere. I mean, when I'm in in Estonia, I'm, I'm still in the in the in, in environment of like s- politics and uh, all the society problems come up. But I'm when I'm in Italy, I never think about like any like um, environmental problems, social problems, anything like that. Yeah. I, I I am like really focusing on me. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I wouldn't live maybe a full year there, but maybe just like a couple of uh, months. Do you do you year. do you think that living in because you just said um, you said that here you're not as focused on like social issues and mm. environmental issues. Has living in Rome affected you so you're now more conscious of it? Because I know I know that overall as a, as, as a, a talent society and Estonians mm-hmm. and, and northerners as we are. Um, we're very eco-minded and we're trying to look for like, hey, let's not use plastic bags. Let's use a reusable bag or a paper bag. Let's, you know, use... By the way, EBS official water bottles, you can buy them at the store. I don't know how much they cost, but <laughs> I need to plug that. Um, you know, we're very conscious-minded in that mm-hmm. aspect. Has this... Has this? Um, has going to another city really affected your mindset where you're more even more conscious than you already were before? And are you trying to maintain that consciousness? Yeah, it actually did because um, in Rome, there's a lot of trash. There's a lot of trash. When I came back to Estonia, um, I got this li- like a little habit. Uh, I mean, I, I go to walk every day in the forest, um, and uh, most likely I'm gonna see some trash in the forest, like uh, somewhere around me. And every day I I, I take some some trash with me. 
and I'm gonna throw it away. That's something I I didn't like in Rome because I mean, uh, I, I I mean I get the point. Where the hell are you gonna throw the trash if if there's nowhere to throw it? Yeah, uh, you're gonna leave it on the on the streets. So that's something I I needed to get used to it. And when I came back to Estonia, I I tried to kind of solve this problem. Yeah. And and Eli, I wanna I'll phrase the same question for you, but. Um, so Randy said that Mil- that Rome was very was a dirty city. I got, would, is yeah. it, just like, dirty city. Um, would you say that Milan was the same way? Have you? Because I know, again, from talking to you, it, it comes across that you're not only just interested in finance; you're also interested in helping your. God, I don't want to sound like a racist talking about this. Like you're obviously from Finland, but your family comes from Africa. Yeah, direct descendant essentially. Yeah, and I feel like you come across as the kind of guy who wants to give back to his community and help rebuild and and make it a better place for future generations. Yes. So has going from knowing where your family comes from, becoming growing up as a, a Finnish citizenship, and then you have this mindset you're going to go do finances. Has the Milan affected that at all? And that same thing, you know, not just are you mind, are you conscious now more of the environmental factors that we deal with every day, but have you gone somewhere else with it? Yeah, actually, uh, well, at Bocconi we had this, uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, seminars, and uh, in one seminar we had one Nobel Prize winner who was talking about business ethics and all these sustainability uh, factors, you know, affecting the business world these days. And uh, I actually sat there for two hours listening to this man, and it actually, you know, changed it, changed my perspective, you know, about you know how to approach these sustainability issues in Africa and how to approach uh, this, you know, such as you know sus- sus- sustainable finance and you know how to recycle, for example. You know, we have these big issues with trash in Africa, big issues with you know, no corruption and all this yeah. stuff. But you know, during his seminar i mean i just i mean i felt something you know like so i learned it, so much from it so not even that you learned it it actually moved you to, to to want to pursue something else yeah of course so you um so prior to before, say let's go right before let's go to the mindset right before you walk into that study hall and you listen to a nobel uh prize winner uh talk were you no, when you walked in you already knew the topics he was going to talk about roughly I knew the topics that we will be talking about, and I wanted new, you know, information and yeah. some, you know, practical practical aspects of yeah. this, you know, of how to tackle these issues. And when I sat there, I don't know. After that, you know, seminar, it kind of shaped my mind, changed me. Yeah. You know? But so you already walk? Were you were you walking and already agreeing with him, like with with general topics? And he just solidified and pointed, like, okay, you have say your say you have a 120 radius of what you're trying to shoot at, he just laser focused you and like, this is exactly what I have to do with my life? Uh, not like laser focused me, but he brought like new aspects, you know, yeah. around it. You know, I had already these ideas, but I needed, you know, some affirmation. And he kind of, you know, brought it, you know, yeah, all it there to narrow it down. And now I actually, you know, know, you know, something, you know, what I'm going to do when I start my businesses in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine as a comedian with Dave Chappelle came in and said, "Hey, boy, this is what you should probably do and what you, what we're looking at long term." I would, I would hop on that same bandwagon. Um, so here's the here's the question I've been trying to like fend off a bit. Did your did so for your semester and your year? Did it live up to be what your fantasy was priorly? Like you're on the plane, you're like, well, "Let's get some margaritas, let's just turn up," and you realize, "Damn, I got an essay to write tomorrow." Like what were did you walk in like super pumped up or did you do you just like i'm just going to take it for what it is like how did you approach it and did it live up to your reality it was hard to imagine what what is going to happen in in like this one year but uh yeah sort of um there were some things i i i really tried to visualize and after i went to rome i uh, I even looked up the videos and uh, like broadcasts, and uh, I, I I explored the city before I went to Rome. Uh, so, yeah, it kind of it kind of lived up to my expectations. Um, the school was great, the yeah. city was great. Uh, Rome is beautiful. I I, I mean I, I recommend. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess there are always some things that don't really. Can I can I prod you a little bit more? What were Besides, okay, because I imagine maybe some of the school might be a, might be the thing that you lived. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, this is going to be dope, and then, you know, it's not. But what were the main things that you're like, 
this is what I'm imagining and it's nothing like it. Um, if there, if, I mean, if there, I don't want to like make you have to say something, yeah. but if there, if that doesn't exist, you know, something close to it or something that you're, you're given an idea from the internet and from books and stuff, you're like, this is what it appears like. And then this is what it's actually is because I'll be honest with you. When I moved here, I thought winter was going to be great. I didn't realize it was going to be raining. <laughs> yeah, I, I would point up two things, actually. Uh, like you said, one is weather. Uh, I thought it's going to be way more warmer in the winter yeah. time, but it, it was actually almost uh, snowing there. So it was cold. Yeah, it was cold. But, uh, but, the, but the second thing, I never read out that the public transportation is so bad. It it actually was. I mean, you could wait for like uh, you could wait for hours to to go to somewhere like which is I don't know ten minutes away. So, um, yeah. public transportation is something you you need to um, you kind of need to think around it, or you need to find some other uh, possibilities to go somewhere. Uh, I, I'm gonna ask you the exact same question. Man. Yeah, I mean, for me, when I I mean when I was going to Italy, I actually just you know fantasized everything. I didn't want I didn't want to go to internet to look for those you know videos or anything. I just fantasized everything, and when I got into playing, I was like, okay, this is it. We then gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. But the best thing was that you know when I was um, it was the summer before going to Italy. During the summer, I was working in one financial company, and it was midsummer when um, uh, we started creating these uh, WhatsApp groups. Yeah, and that was amazing. I was like, I was at work, and people were like, "Hey guys, we should create a WhatsApp group." And there was like thousand and two hundred people, two hundred people trying to fit in one chat, in one chat. So it was like it was crazy. Immediately muted that chat, didn't you? <laughs> I'm yes, I muted <laughs> multiple of them. We, we had do. like we had a lot of chats and. I muted some of them, and you know we started we started to get pumped up during the summer. Yeah. So when I got there, I already knew some people by chatting. We were just you know with one guy from New York, James. We were chatting every day yeah, about I know finance. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, <I've> got, <laughs> there's more than Apple, baby. You know what it is. <laughs> yeah. So we started chatting in summer, and when I got there, he was actually the first guy that I met. Yeah. That I met in, in Milan, and. Uh, Man, I just got there and it was just, it was crazy. Yeah. It wasn't like anything that I expected, but I was like, wow, this is going to be crazy. And when I went to school, it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. I have to admit, we had a lot of assignments, especially in corporate finance and accounting. We had to do so many things. Okay, so this segue, this is a great one. Segues yeah. right into our next topic. Yeah. I would like to say, so your, was, the, was it the course load that was overbearing and made it difficult? Or was it just the 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 in depth the the depthness that they go into at the school was overtly difficult? Depth, depthness, depth, yeah, depth, depth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are so much things like we had these big books and we had to read for every single lecture, and you could see like people in the library. They put pressure on you. I mean, you 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 go into a library, you see Italians read. They read like, man. That was like next level thing that I've seen. They read like those Italians. That's what they do. Yes. They read so much and that put pressure on me, of course. So I had to spend a lot of time in libraries, but I also had to travel. So I had to balance between these two things and I had to party. And there were a lot of, I like, a lot and lots of parties. I like your honesty, man. You're like, you're just bringing a calculus book to like, I mean, there's, turn up. Yeah. What's a differential? <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of things. I mean, I mean, during the parties, I got to meet many amazing people so of course i had to go and network there and i networked in the football pitch soccer for you of course you come from the u.s <laughs> dude me and me on color oh you speak finnish now <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean there i mean I, it wasn't something that i expected but when i got yeah. there i mean it was real it was yeah. real things just started to happen all these people that i was chatting with during that summer you know, they were there. And I was like, yeah. guys, should we go to Sicily? Yes. Should we go to Milan? Uh, no, to Rome? Yes. Yeah, I saw this through your Instagram story, man. I thought you were just like <laughs> taking a gap here. This man was all over Italy. I mean, of course, to... of course, it felt like, for me personally, it felt like vacation, but also I had to put in a lot of work 
especially in terms of school. You know, I had to go to libraries, but I also, you know, I have to balance. I have to balance my life, you know. So it's, I don't All know. Right. It's very honest of you. It's yeah. like the, I like how you phrased it too, because he's like, you know what? There was. <laughs> A bottle a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> and then my notebook for recollections later when I'm... It's all about the balance. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, uh, Randy, how did you balance life over there? Was it... How was, how was, how was your school life with there? Was you just, you just a party animal or you just... It don't seem like a party animal to me. You seem like you're business-minded to those markets of Italy. You know what I'm... I don't know why I'm bringing that up, man. <laughs> Actually, um, I really can't remember anything... From September, uh, I mean, it yeah, was, that's a uh, good sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how my Novembers are, man. <laughs> <laughs> because you know all this like uh, parties and uh, networking, and I mean the school itself started uh, mid September, so like yeah. two, two, three weeks basically, partying and going everywhere, and uh, so it was tough. Um, yeah, it, it, it was real tough <laughs> when you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, I would I would agree uh, what Eli said that yeah. they really go in depth. Uh, I mean, studying luxury management, we talked about uh, the components of watches and and I didn't and, even realize this was a thing. Yeah, I mean, and you go more in depth there, uh, like what materials, how expensive, where they come from, like everything. So they really they really go in depth. How did I balance? Um, uh, I mean, we lived th uh, three together, three guys, uh, yeah. my classmates, uh, Oliver and Kaspar. So I guess we always found some time to cook uh, ourselves. Uh, it really, uh, it really like made but, things easier for us. But you said, so. though, you were really into Italian cuisine. So I have to ask. Were you really making Italian cuisine or were you just, you know, some carto yahaklav? You know, just <laughs> Estonian special. <laughs> yeah, were you just no. like, I'm going to take. With Italian spices. <laughs> He's like stroking off with a bit of basil. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, I made pasta bolognese basically every week, twice a week, yeah. Twice a week. That's an excess of noodles, man. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm being told by our produce, producer, Rico, that we need to start wrapping it up, which. I'll be honest with you guys, this is a lot of fun. I'm having a great time. But uh, for final notes for both of you, if you if you were to tell yourself or tell someone else who's interested in going to anywhere in Italy, so say Milan and Rome, what's some critical advice that you think is the key thing they should know prior to getting on the plane to go to that respective city? Well, first of all, you got to have your tax number. That's very important in Italy. <laughs> I had it in summer. I did it. I mean, I did everything. I took every precaution that I could. So I had my tax number, everything done before I went there, and I had my house before I went there. So I had everything, you know, under control when I got there. Like a European tax number or like an Italian tax number? Italian. And it, and you can do this online, or you got to go to the embassy, or what's the deal? Uh, embassy, I guess. I, I went to embassy. Okay, so yeah. let's just let's just put it out there for the viewers. You go in Italy, go to the embassy, keep it official. If someone online tells you I can get it to you for five dollars overnight, <laughs> they're lying. Yes. <laughs> uh, and it, would that would that be the whole get your tax number? That's the whole advice. Or? It's important that you have it because if you want to sign any rent papers or anything, they usually ask for that. So, so you're at, so you're pretty much just saying like it's, you know, don't worry about the school kind of prep. You need to be prep for life, really. Yeah, I mean, I mean, of course, and plus, you know, just, you know, be ready, be yeah. ready for the school, and you're gonna have to work, work a lot, you know, and work hard. Yeah, and you know, enjoy your time. I think yeah. that is the best way to say it. Tax numbers and enjoying the time, man. <laughs> That's it. Uh, uh, and for Mister Rome over here. Yeah, I would say uh, prepare, f prepare yourself for bureaucracy. First of all, uh, we had to pay our bills. Uh, communal bills to um, to tabakis actually, which are tobacco shops. So we we cannot pay anywhere else than, wait, than you, in tobacco shop. Wait, you paid what at a tobacco shop? Uh, electricity, uh, utility water bills, bill, utility bills, communal bills. Um, I didn't. I, I'm yeah. just. I didn't. I got everything out of control. It, it, See, he <laughs> was like, I got the tax number, not touching the tobacco. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know. I don't know. It, it somehow works like that. Uh, that's, that's just weird. That's not even wrong. That's just different. <laughs> it is. Mafia uh, money. <laughs> uh, 
Secondly, uh, like you said, get your home, get your apartment before you go there. Uh, it, it's crucial. Everything takes time. Everything takes time. Uh, thirdly, um, take a lot of cash with you because uh, you cannot pay uh, with card everywhere. Uh, Milan, yes. Milan, yes. Yeah, Milan's advance. Rome, yeah. not so much. Rome, yeah. You have to pay in cash everywhere, basically. All right. Even in school. So, yeah, otherwise, I would say travel a lot. Yeah. The more south you go, the more ag agricultural it gets, the mm -hmm. more mm, simpler it gets. Like, yeah. So... Well, go and explore. I'm all about that simple life, so maybe I'll go hit up a farm. If um, <laughs> like maybe they got an Airbnb. Maybe. Um, <laughs> this is the time where I kick you guys out of the studio, sadly. Um, but if you got anything else you want to plug, like Mister, are you? A, I think you're a rapper, aren't you? Oh yeah, I am. <clears throat> I don't, um, uh, Rico. Do we have the ability to play any audio tracks? See, we get a freestyle going. No, we cannot get a freestyle going. Uh, next time we have you in the studio. Okay. All right. Uh, Next time, I rap about finance and everything at Italy, probably or no, something I, else. I, I can beatbox. Oh, oh, dear oh, Lord. oh. <laughs> oh, now we're going some deep territory. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll save the beatboxing and the rapping for next time, Mr. Randy Padar. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to plug? As Mr. Rapper plugged himself. Uh, <laughs> uh no. No. Okay. No, well, I'm then, good, uh, are you going to go for student council next year? No, I'm uh, actually trying to graduate in. in so, in, but then are you going to work at the school? Because otherwise, I'm going to plug you like as a, as a vote for Randy, as a vote for Caleb, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I won't. I won't. No, you won't. No. All right, guys. Well, this might be the last time you ever see Mr. Randy Padder <laughs> alive in school before exams. Are you writing a thesis? No, I'm. I'm going for exam. No, he's going to exam. He's going hardcore. More thesis, man. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much. This has been the first episode of the Just Go podcast featuring the Italy boys. Uh, tune in for next week's episode. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye.